Hi guys, today we're going to be talking all about gas laws. Now this is one of those topics that can be very, very confusing if you research it yourself uh, because the things that you need to know for A level are significantly harder than the things that you need to know for IGCSE. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you all about this idea of Boyle's Law. Now that is the only thing you need for your I CIE IGCSE physics. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you some extension work where you can look at other gas laws, which will come up with something called the experimental gas equation, or sometimes called the ideal gas equation. And you'll see this written about a lot online, and there are even questions up on Isaac Physics about it. However, today we only need to know about Boyle's Law, and for your actual exam, you only need to know about the concept of Boyle's Law as well. Okay, so let's get started. So on a quick recap, first thing I want you to do is just can you remember what causes gas pressure? So the main cause is we have particles inside a gas. And one of the things that is really important to remember is that they move randomly. That random motion is very, very important, something that CIE ask a lot. It doesn't matter so much at uh, IGCSE, but the reason we talk about randomness becomes very important to A-level. As they move randomly, they collide with walls. Uh, with the walls, what was? With walls of their container. Now, if you go back to uh, a video that actually I uploaded to, uh, the same day I'll upload this video, um, you can see that in the collision uh, there is a change in momentum. And that's because the particles have mass and they have velocity. So their masses, if I put here a little m here at the moment this has got velocity heading that way when it collides off the wall let's say it bounces that way it's then got a new velocity but it'll have the same mass so if it's changed direction it has changed its momentum we know that a force is required to change momentum And therefore, there is a force on the wall. We also know the wall takes up some space, so the wall has area. And we know that any force divided by an area is a pressure. So gases cause pressure because as they move around and collide with walls, they are exerting a force on those walls, and that force creates a pressure over that surface area. Um, it's quite important that you learn those steps in the logic. Um, really, for uh, IGCSE, the most important one is this one, this one, uh, this one, and these two. So you don't really need, usually, uh, in CIE, they don't normally check that you've talked about the change in momentum, um, but they do check it at A-level, and sometimes uh, CIE may ask for it. So it's worth being really, really clear on how that happens. So with that definition in mind, what I want you to do now is think about changes. So if I increase the temperature, volume, or number of particles in my box, what will happen to the pressure in each case? So if I increase the temperature, what hopefully you got was I should expect to see an increase in pressure. If I increase the volume, so that means making my box bigger. If this was my box to start with, and I make it, I add on some extra volume, so I make my box bigger, then I've gonna, I'm going to decrease the pressure in the box. And if I increase the number of particles, so I put in more particles into my box, then I'd also expect the pressure to increase. Now, why is that? Well, for the temperature, it's the idea that particles are moving faster. So if they move faster, they've got more kinetic energy, um, and they hit the walls more often, um, and with more energy. And we can say, so, 
more force. So the more force occurs. If I increase the volume, then there's less space, sorry, there's more space for the particles to travel around with. So they hit the walls less often. If they hit the walls less often, there is less force acting on those walls. If the force goes down, the pressure goes down. And then for increasing the number of particles, well, more particles hit the wall each second, so there are more collisions, which means overall there's more force, which means there's going to be more pressure. So what I want you to think about is, if I gave you a set of axes like this, and I asked you to plot volume against pressure, at a fixed temperature and number of particles. So what does that mean? Again, I want you to imagine that I have a box like this and it has volume V. Now I can attach a pressure gauge to the top here that will record pressure P of the gas inside. And then what I want you to imagine is that I can move a wall of my box out, so I can make my box expand. If I have a fixed number of particles, that means no particles can get in or out. It's a fixed number of things bouncing around inside my box. I also want you to imagine a fixed temperature. So that means that it doesn't get hotter or colder. If that's the case, what would you expect a graph of pressure against volume to look like? Well, you're going to find out for me. So what I'd like you to do is open up a simulation on Google Classroom, um, and then you're going to follow these things. So I'll leave these instructions up for you, but I'm also going to show you it here. So when you follow the link, it's going to open up uh, this web page here from uh, Colorado Physics um, that is used to uh, demonstrate loads of different physics things. Um, you don't need to worry about what these buttons over here do. All I need you to do is click on the Ideal button. So what we have here is a container that's going to be like our box. And it has a pressure gauge attached here. And there's a pump down here that if you click and drag, you can pump some particles into the box. So I want you to start off by setting this up, pumping a few particles in and watching what happens. You can see we've now recording the temperature of 300 Kelvin and I've got a pressure of about 23 atmospheres. Um, you can change it to kilopascals if you want to. It actually throughout this experiment doesn't matter what you measure in. Now, CIE only care about the relationship between pressure and volume. But in physics, what we find is that temperature matters as well, and we saw that on the earlier table. So CIE will only ask you about things where the temperature is being the same the whole time or being held constant. So what I want you to do is in the temperature box over here, just click that, and that will force the temperature to always stay the same. Once that's happened, I want you to add in this tick box to show the width. And you can see it's saying 10 nanometers because this is simulating a really, really tiny scale. Now what we can do is now I can change this length by clicking and dragging it. And by clicking and dragging it, changing the length will change the volume as well. So what I'd like you to do is on Google Classroom, I have set you a document that you can put in different pairs of values. You can put in the width here, and the width will scale linearly with volume. So you can just put the width as, as your volume, and then you can record the pressure. This pressure number will be changing all the time, so take a rough average. I would say this is about 16,000 kilo, sorry, 1,600 kPa. Then I would like you to change the volume and record the new pressure. Change the volume again, record the new pressure. If you use the document that I've set you on Google Classroom, that will plot a graph for you of 
pressure against volume. When you've done that, I'd like you to come back to this video um, for part. So, so the video will pause and give you a question. Um, when you've come back, to, when you when you finished, I'd like you to come back and look at it again. So these should be the results that you got. Hopefully you saw something else. Obviously your numbers will be different, but you should have got a curve that looks like this. And if you think about it, it makes total sense. What a lot of people think at the start, if we have volume and pressure, a lot of them for the first attempt will draw this. Okay. Now, there's a couple of problems with that. First of all, it's saying that if I have zero volume, if I go to a completely zero volume, it will take up a set amount of pressure. But that doesn't make sense because um, if I have zero volume, what I've actually created is a black hole and everything would go very, very strange. It's also saying, well, what would happen if I then set my volume to here? Well, if you extend this line, I'd have a negative pressure. And that doesn't make any sense. It's, it's illogical. So this curve doesn't make sense. What does make sense is this shape, because it's saying, as my volume gets very, very small, my pressure heads towards infinity. It never actually reaches it, but it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and that makes sense. It also says that as my volume gets larger and larger and larger, my pressure is getting lower and lower and lower and lower, but it never goes zero, or negative. Now, if you're feeling confident with your maths, you may know that if I had this as y and x, this looks like y is equal to 1 over x. And if you said that, you'd be absolutely right. So what this looks like is pressure, and I'm going to change my colour so it's really easy to see actually. I can say that pressure is equal to 1, or no, sorry, a constant I'm going to call k, divided by volume. If I rearrange that, so I'm going to multiply both sides by v, then I get pressure times volume is equal to a constant. Now, if you're not feeling confident with maths, don't worry, just learn this. This is called Boyle's Law. This is the only law you need to know for uh, IGCSE physics about gases. But this is a really, really important equation. This constant depends on lots of things. It depends on number of particles, and it depends on temperature. Interestingly, it doesn't actually depend on what the gas is, which is quite cool. Um, we'll do a lot more on that at A level. OK, so let's think about an example of where we can use this. This is a past paper question uh, from a few years ago, and it says that a vertical cylinder has a smooth, well-fitting piston in it. Weights can be added or removed from the tray, from, sorry, from a tray at the top of the piston. Now this well fitting, what that means is there is a constant amount of gas. It's telling you that no particles can get in or out. And we add some weights to the tray. State what state, this is just tell me the answer, what happens to the pressure of the air in the cylinder as a result of adding these weights. So what will happen as I add the weights is this piston will drop down to be lower so my volume has got smaller. So as I said earlier, if the volume goes down the pressure will go up, so the pressure will increase. Then you're told that the initial pressure of the trapped air is 1.05 times 10 to the 5 pascals. When the weights are added, the volume of air decreases from 860 to 645. The temperature does not change. Calculate the final pressure of the air. 
So to do this, I'm going to use pressure times volume is a constant. Now, the cool thing I can do is I can say, I'm going to call this P1 for pressure at the start, and I'm going to call this V1 for volume at the start. I'm also going to call this one V2, and I'm going to say the final pressure I'm going to call P2. Now, what's interesting is I can change this to say P1 and V1 is equal to a constant. If P1 and V1 are equal to a constant, P2 and V2 will be equal to the same constant. Now that constant might be different every single time I do this experiment, but it will be the same as long as I haven't changed things. So if I haven't added any particles, if I haven't changed the temperature, that will be the same. So because these two numbers are the same, I can then say P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. And this is another key equation that you need to remember. In other words, the pressure times volume at the start is equal to the pressure times volume at the end. If I can do that, then solving this becomes really easy. I can say that P1, so P1 is 1.05, so I can say 1.05 times 10 to the 5, multiplied by V1, which is 860, is equal to P2, which I don't know, multiplied by 645. Now to solve that, what I want to do is divide both sides by 645. And what I get is uh, 1.05 times 105, sorry, times 10 to the 5, multiplied by 860 all divided by 645. And I'm just going to grab my calculator and plug that in as 1.40 times 10 to the 5. And that's going to be the same. It's still a pressure. So that will be Pascal's. And there you go. Then says the area of the piston is 5.0 times 10 to negative 3 meters squared. Calculate the weight that is added to the piston. Um, so this is quite a cool question. Um, this is going to relate to something later, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the change in pressure. And the change in pressure will be... Uh, 1.4 times 10 to the 5 take away uh, 1.05 times 10 to the 5 which is uh, 0 0.35 times 10 to the 5 pascals and then I can use the fact now remember a uh, weight is a force it's not uh, the mass. So I can say uh, pressure is force divided by area, so I want the extra pressure. So I can say 0 0.35 times 10 to the 5 is equal to the weight added, which is the force, divided by 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, so I'm going to rearrange that equation by multiplying by the ten by the five. So I'm going to get 0 0.35 times 10 to the five multiplied by 5.0 times 10 to the negative three, which comes out as 0.5. times 5 times 10 to the negative 3 
that gap comes to 175 newtons because weight is always a, in newtons. So there you go, that's an idea of how you can use these things to solve some past paper questions. If you're in my class, what you're going to be now doing is some uh, Isaac physics questions. So I thought I'd just go through one Isaac physics question just to uh, make it nice and clear. So we've got a car, um, and it says that its suspension works by having a fixed mass. That means, again, number of particles of gas sealed. Again, that makes it fixed inside a flexible capsule. Its pressure is usually uh, 10... Uh, 2.4 times 10 to the 5 pascals, so if that's going to be P1, and its volume is 2 litres, so that would be V1. It's on a bumpy road at one point, the capsule is compressed to 1.5 litres, I'm going to call that V2. And the question asks you to find the pressure in the new, the new pressure. So again, I'm going to use P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Uh, so P1, so that would be 2.4 times 10 to the 5, multiplied by V1, which is 2.0, and that will be equal to P2, which I don't know yet, multiplied by 1.5. So if I divide both sides by 1.5, I get 2.4 times 10 to the 5, multiplied by 2.0, divided by 1.5, equals P2. Plug that into a calculator and you get 2.4 times 10 to the 5 times 2.0 divided by 1.5 comes out as 3.2 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Um, and you can see I've given my answer to two significant figures because again uh, I've been given two significant figures throughout the question. Okay, that's everything you need to know for CIE IGCSE Physics. If you want to do a little bit of extra, um, I'm going to now talk about uh, changing temperature and number of particles. So if we do change temperature and number of particles, we'll get this relationship. It's actually a straight line. So what I can say is that the volume of the gas is equal to some constant multiplied by temperature, or V is equal to KT. If you went back a bit, you might remember that I said that uh, pressure is equal to one, sorry, some constant divided by volume. So the cool thing that we can do with algebra is I could rearrange these two equations and I can say that V divided by T is equal to a constant. And I can also say that pressure uh, times volume is equal to a constant. If I did a third experiment, so I, if I did a third experiment where I wanted to do uh, pressure and temperature, I'd find this same relationship again. So the last one I can say is pressure is equal to some constant times temperature, or pressure divided by temperature is equal to a constant. Now a cool thing about algebra is I can do anything I like to any equations provided I do the same thing on both sides. So I'm going to call that equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. And what I'm going to do is just multiply them together. So I'm going to get 1 times 2 times 3. So I'm going to start by timesing together all the left hand sides and all the right-hand sides. So what that gives me is V over T multiplied by sorry, V over T multiplied by P times V multiplied by P over T. And those equal the other sides, so that will be a, some constant times another constant times another constant. So what I get is, if I collect all these terms, p squared times v squared over t squared is equal to some constant. Now if I then square root both sides, 
then what I get is PV over T is equal to the square root of a bunch of constants. Now if I'm just going to take the square root of a bunch of constants, I can just replace those three constants with a single one. And this is a universal gas equation. You don't need to know it yet, but you're going to come across it at A level, and it's a really nice little demonstration of how in physics we can sometimes combine equations. If you're not too sure about it, you can ask me about it in the lesson, but don't worry about trying to remember it. Okay, hope that was quite satisfying for you. For those of you that stuck with it, really well done. Um, like I say, if you do have questions, come see me in the lesson. Otherwise, thanks for watching.